continuing in our study of Hebrews. Today we come to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll be reading the entire chapter, Hebrews 10, 1 through 39. For the law, since it has only a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have consciousness of sins? But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins year by year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, To do your will, O God. After saying above, Sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have not desired, nor have you taken pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first in order to establish the second. By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But he, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their heart, and on their mind I will write them. He then says, And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severer punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and has insulted the Spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days when, after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of sufferings, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and tribulations, and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated. For you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted joyfully the seizure of your property, knowing that you have for yourselves a better possession and a lasting one. 
Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. The author of Hebrews is trying to make the point that the law is not the thing that saves us. Uh, the law is not anything but a foreshadowing, a, a looking forward to the work that Jesus would do. The sacrifices symbolizing our need for a sacrifice that once and for all time will permanently save us, cleanse us from sin. Uh, in verse 14 he writes, For by one offering he has perfected for all, the, all time those who are sanctified. Perfect, per, perfected is made complete, made whole, made entire, uh, not lacking anything, we are made perfectly righteous, perfectly whole in the offering that Jesus Christ made on the cross for us. All we have to do is accept it. And he encourages us, you know, we've got this confidence. Once you hear this gospel, come boldly to God to accept it and receive this full assurance of salvation. Hold fast to that hope. Stick together. The assembling of ourselves together is, is not just to go to church. It's not just that. It is coming together for encouragement, to encourage each other, lift each other up, rejoice with each other, weep with each other, and build each other up as we grow together to become more and more Christ-like. On the other hand, if we have someone who, having heard the gospel, rejects it, there is nothing left for him but terror and the fury of the fire that will consume the adversaries. We normally refer to this as hell. The scripture refers to it as the lake of fire, a fire that just burns forever. The fire is never quenched. Their soul never dies. They are in agony forever. That, that is the future for those who reject the saving grace that God offers us. The one thing that can save us, if you treat that as unholy, unclean, you reject it, you disdain it, you despise it, you turn away from it, you have no hope left. But those of us who have come together and accepted Jesus Christ, it's we are made perfect for all time. Those who are being sanctified, those who are in the process of growing in Christ. I talk sometimes about the three tenses of salvation. I have been saved when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was declared His forever. I am being saved. As I grow and I become more and more like Christ, he is saving me from my broken self, even though I am already saved and having been totally forgiven of my sins, past, future, past, present, and future. And I shall be saved when Jesus comes again and takes us to be with him forever. Our salvation will be made complete. So he says, endure have this confidence. Be encouraged. Yeah, we get sometimes some persecution. We get some trials. We get some tribulation. In other parts of the world, people are killed and lose their property and driven out of their homes for the crime of accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and living for Him. But we have something better stored up for us in heaven. These material things, we leave them all behind when we die anyway. So what good is it worrying about those? But he will come back. He will take us to be with him forever if we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We are not those who shrink back to destruction, 
but those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Accept that Christ who has died for you and you have eternal life here and now.